An easy way to think about objects in programming is to think of them as recipes. Every time you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you use peanut butter, jelly, and two slices of bread. This means that if you're taking lunch orders for Paul, Anne, and Sarah, and they all say they want peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you don't have to write out the ingredients for each sandwich. You know what a peanut butter and jelly sandwich contains by virtue of it being a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Thinking about objects as recipes is a very simple way to categorize something so complex, and objects can get very, very complex in object-oriented programming languages. Fortunately for us, DocAssembl has many, many built-in objects that you can go ahead and make use of without having to do any sort of heavy lifting on the programming side. On my screen, I've pulled up the default interview that loads when you first start DocAssembl, either in Docker on your local machine or in the cloud. You'll see that starting on line 6, we have something called the Objects block. And under Objects, we have one object, which is Client, and Client is using the object class called Individual. Individual is one of those objects that DocAssembl comes preloaded with that you can use right out of the box. The object individual, because it's a built-in object that comes with DocAssembl, comes with standard built-in parts. To use our peanut butter and jelly sandwich example, this is like saying every peanut butter and jelly sandwich has bread, has jelly, has peanut butter. The individual object always has a name. It also has an address, a location, an age, a birth date, a gender, and some other aspects that we're not going to go over in this interview. You'll notice here in the first question, what is your name? We have first name and then client.name.first. This is DocAssembl's convention of saying client dot or client has a name and then that name dot first name has a first part. Client's last name I would just do client.name.last. And that automatically sets an attribute of client's name as last. And then when I run the interview, it will ask me what is the client's last name, and I'll fill it in. It'll assign it to client.name.last. For our field nickname here, we really should follow our own conventions. So I'll put in client.name.nickname. Down here in the question, what is your date of birth, you'll see that we have date of birth, client.birthdate, and that's of data type date. This is another one of those built-in attributes that DocAssembl comes preloaded with for the object individual. Down here in our ending mandatory screen, you'll see we have here is your document, and then just the variable name client, or the object name client. DocAssembl has a built-in method to automatically generate the entire name of client whenever you just refer to that object. This is something that's called objects know their own name. So whenever you refer to client in this way, it will set it to the client's first and last name because we've defined those up here in this question. Down here, I need to correct my mistake with nickname. and then we should be able to run our interview. I'll hit save and run. We'll put in the first and last name. And our nickname. Put in our quest. And our date of birth. And then at the end of our interview, you'll see up here, here is your document, Abbott Costello, because I put in the first name Abbott and the last name Costello, and DocAssembl knows to refer to those whenever I just insert the variable name client. When I look at the PDF, 
your name is Abbott Costello. Again, here in the content, your name is just client, and it will automatically pull that first and last name and put it in as Abbott Costello. Your nickname is who's on first, you're a senior, your quest is to find the Holy Grail, you're eligible for Medicaid. Again, there are a lot of things that you can do with objects, and this is a very simple example using one of DocuSymbol's built-in objects. Whenever you're creating interviews, I highly recommend using the built-in objects that DocuSymbol comes with because it's just a more elegant way to code interviews. It will also make your life easier when creating more and more complex interviews. I also highly recommend going through the documentation that DocuSymbol has for objects and reading through that just to bolster your understanding of what they are, how they work, and what they can do in your interviews.